I've mentioned earlier in the course that I see a lot of people complaining and making accusations about how ChatGPT cannot do math, but that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding of what ChatGPT is, what it isn't, and how you can and should use it. So I hope to have shown you so far in this course that ChatGPT is incredibly helpful for learning math concepts, but if you think of ChatGPT as just a fancy calculator, then you're going to be disappointed, just like you're going to be disappointed if you expect your microwave to start playing your favorite music, or if you expect your refrigerator to wash your clothes. Let me begin by defining what I mean by general and specific reasoning in mathematics. When I'm talking about general knowledge or general reasoning, I'm referring to concepts and principles in mathematics in particular, concepts and claims that many people have written about online and many people have discussed online. ChatGPT has been trained on text on the web, and so ChatGPT can really help you with general knowledge and general reasoning about mathematics. On the other hand, specific knowledge or specific reasoning is about solving a particular math problem with specific numbers, so a particular arithmetic problem. Now, for many problems involving arithmetic, ChatGPT actually is able to do the math and give a correct answer, but that's really not the best way to use ChatGPT. You know, if you want to multiply two numbers, then use a calculator. That is literally what calculators are designed for. ChatGPT is not designed to multiply two numbers because ChatGPT is not a mathematician, nor does it have a numerical processing software built into it. In fact, in my opinion, it is remarkable that ChatGPT is capable of doing arithmetic, considering it's not designed to do math. It is designed to predict words in a sequence. Now, I find this absolutely fascinating because it means that there is something fundamental in arithmetic that can be learned and solved purely by learning probabilities between successive words. Okay, but anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. Here is the key distinction, and this is what you should be asking yourself when you are using ChatGPT to learn math. Are you asking a question that you could find the answer to yourself if you spent a few hours looking around online? If the answer is yes, then uh, it's something you could find online, but maybe it would take you a long time and it wouldn't be written in a way that you could really understand. Then you are using ChatGPT in the right way. On the other hand, if you want to know the product of two large numbers, that's not a thing that people write about online. People don't discuss that sort of uh, arithmetic online. So you're using the wrong tool. Use a calculator. One thing to know about ChatGPT, which is normally a, a good thing for computers and human-computer interaction, uh, but uh, maybe not so much about ChatGPT, is that ChatGPT is designed to be helpful and agreeable. It doesn't like to disagree with you. So if you make a mistake, it's going to be reluctant to tell you that you're wrong. And instead, ChatGPT will often take the blame itself for example, by saying that it wasn't clear enough or that there was a miscommunication or a misunderstanding. So that's just something in general to keep in mind when you're asking ChatGPT to correct errors in your reasoning. Now, I'm going to show you how to deal with this and how to deal with ChatGPT correctly, but something to keep in mind. Okay, this last point I've already stressed, but just to reiterate, the correct way to use ChatGPT is to help you understand concepts and principles in math, not to help you solve specific equations. That's what you use a calculator for. Again, for relatively simple calculations uh, involving most arithmetic, you can trust ChatGPT to give you the correct answer. But if you want to use a calculator, use a calculator. Here I have an example to illustrate what I'm referring to. I asked ChatGPT to multiply these two numbers, and ChatGPT gave me back an answer in less than a second, which is actually pretty remarkable because I certainly couldn't do this multiplication in my head. And it would take me longer than it took ChatGPT to give the answer for me to even tell you the correct order of magnitude. 
So, you know, how many digits should the answer be? So is this number correct or incorrect? Well, I don't know. So I also ran this in Python. Python is just a fancy calculator. So here you see the real answer. And it's interesting to see that ChatGPT got part of it right. So it got the uh, order of magnitude correct. It got the first few digits correct, but overall the answer is wrong. Now, if you're not familiar with Python, then uh, don't worry about the weird looking formatting stuff. That's just to print out commas. Okay, so this is a specific number with specific uh, or specific problem with specific numbers. And if this is your question, then use a calculator or numerical processing software like Python. Okay, now I have a counter example for you. I asked ChatGPT what the commutative rule means in algebra. ChatGPT gave me back an excellent answer that explains the commutative property in addition and multiplication. And then it even tells us that the commutative property does not hold for subtraction or division. This answer is perfect. It's amazing. It's clearly written. It's easy to understand. If you want to know what the commutative property is and you go to ChatGPT, you can't go wrong here. This is an excellent explanation. And then I asked the same question with exactly the same wording in Python. And the answer is uh, nothing. Python has no concept of what the commutative rule means. Python doesn't even know how to parse the text that I was writing. It gave me an error about an object algebra not being found, but that's just because it was looking for the keyword in. You can see that that's highlighted in a different color. Now, maybe you're laughing at this slide, but this slide really illustrates to me, and also the previous slide, that when you use ChatGPT and when you would use a calculator, it annoys me to no end that the internet is flooded with clickbait videos and images and TikTok saying that ChatGPT cannot do math, when in fact, it is the people making those videos and writing those blogs who have not taken the time to understand what ChatGPT is. In some cases, I suspect that people who are creating this content are actually intentionally fooling you to make ChatGPT look worse than it is by employing some tricks. And I'm going to talk about that in a later video. The website you are looking at now is from the OpenAI website on their section about help. Um, I'll put the direct link to this site in the resources for this video in case you're reading it in depth. I just want to show you that um, they are aware of the issues of ChatGPT doing math. So they say um, right here on the top of the page, the challenge of doing math, specifically algebra using OpenAI, now, in my opinion, ChatGPT is pretty good at algebra, where it suffers more is with arithmetic, but that's a, a fine point. Okay. Um, so here, yeah, they're just highlighting that um, they are aware that their language models struggle with math in particular, with a precision, with exact precision in arithmetic problems. Here they offer some uh, suggestions for increasing the consistency or the quality of the outputs in ChatGPT. And you can read through these if you like, you will see that they are basically suggestions that I have already given you in the course. Um, and finally, at the end, uh, they say, you know, not very capable of performing consistently with math problems. Essentially what they are saying here is, if you're looking for a calculator, then use a calculator and don't use ChatGPT. As I have also said many times in this course, uh, ChatGPT is excellent at explaining concepts in mathematics. It's really good at um, guiding you through strategies for solving mathematical problems and exercises. Uh, but if you want a calculator, use a calculator, not a language model. What is also interesting to me about this website is the fact that they are so openly acknowledging this limitation with ChatGPT. I think means that it's something that they are going to be actively working on. And um, I think that means that a future, near future release of ChatGPT will be much, much, much better at mathematics, in particular arithmetic, than the current version is. Anyway, I hope you found this video insightful. And the rest of this video is in this section. I'm going to show more examples that can highlight 
how you can use ChatGPT correctly to identify potential errors in your mathematical reasoning.